I had the letter up. Here we go. Here's the letter. Uh, tag removed from the breast, not sutured, and gallbladder removed. That's right. That's right. A few years ago. That's right. Okay. So um, we've got some scars here. Um, uh, oh, I don't know how I can do this. Sorry, Instagram. I feel bad. I'm showing it on Facebook. You know what? I could show it. I have shown photos on Instagram. But I'm not. I'm prepared on Facebook, but I'm not on Instagram. Um, so Facebook, what do you think? Whoops. Oopsie. Whoop. Loop. Loop. Anyway, what's the best one, do you think? I think that one. That one. Um, oh, I'm off to the side. So um, Facebook people, Instagram people, um, tonight is that going to mean anyway instagram people there's keyword scars on facebook anyway um so basically there's uh, two scars can you probably can't see my so the middle photo you probably can't see my arrow the middle photo shows a, a scar from a keloid from a um gallbladder removal so that's a small scar and that's because that's because that's gone quite red and lumpy that's more of a traditional hypertrophic scar i would say the one on the breast is um quite thick and quite raised and it says it was from a skin tag or something that wasn't sutured so that's a bit of a that, that's a, that's the, the the worry with keloid scars the worry with keloid scars is that the scar will get bigger than the original injury that's the one of the issues with keloid scars you end up with a scar that's bigger than the original scar uh, and that's the one of the big differences between a keloid scar and a hypertrophic scar. So a hypertrophic scar, the scar is just where the uh, initial injury was and, and it's red and lumpy. A keloid extends out with the margins of the original um, scar, the original uh, injury. And that one on the breast looks like, you know, if it was quite a small thing and it's gone big, that is a worry. And this patient has contacted me and this patient has had uh, silicone dressings and it has been used in silicone dressings and they haven't helped. And I've said the next step is steroid injections, which are, which is the sort of next step in the hierarchy. So the first step is massage, moisturizing, a bit of pressure. Uh, is the first step. If that doesn't work, you can move on to silicone dressings, which can come as sheets or can come as a gel on areas like this. The sheet might be helpful if you can, particularly on the breast, if you can keep it on with your bra. Uh, if you can't keep it on, if it's on the face or on your ear or somewhere where you can't keep a silicone sheet on, then the gel can be useful. If that doesn't work, the next step is silicone um, dressings. So it is steroid injections. So once you use the the, the, um, the silicone the next step is is uh, is steroid injections the the problem or the the issue this patient has is that she wants me to cut it out because she doesn't want to come for a, a steroid injection if the steroid injection isn't going to work she wants to go straight to cutting out and i completely understand that and i get where she's coming from and i do feel a bit bad because well it's not like i feel bad i mean we we charge for obviously well we charge for everything basically don't charge for follow-ups but you know we charge for um uh because uh, the first thing is this i mean i don't know if the nhs will treat this but if, if, if you're having it done privately certainly if you're having it done privately with me it's 200 pounds for a steroid injection and you often have to repeat it i usually do a course of three uh, about six six weeks or so apart and then leave it for a few months um so I understand where you're coming from on this one, because I think she's saying, look, I don't want to pay 600 pounds, like on three steroid injections. And what if they don't work and I have to have it cut out anyway, then that's a waste of money. Totally understand that. Where I'm coming from is you've got to do the best treatment for the situation. And the best treatment is once you've used silicone dressings, the best next step is steroid injections. And I totally understand that it might not work, but that is the right thing to do. So, you know, my advice is I think you should do steroid injections next is my advice because it might work. And if it works, then that's fine, because the problem is if we go to the step after that, which is excision, the risk of doing excision is that it can come back worse. And you often can combine an excision with steroid injections. We do what's called an intralesional excision where we leave a little rim of the keloid um, behind once we've done the excision so we're only cutting and stitching within the keloid scar and then we use steroid injections for that little rim but 
I would feel uncomfortable going straight to excision without trying steroid injections because if the steroid injections work, you might not need excision because excision has got a higher risk. Every time you go up the hierarchy, you're increasing the risk. The risk with silicone dressings and massage and pressure, less. Once you move up to steroid injection, there are risks with that. You can inject it too deep, in which case you can get fat necrosis, kill the fat and scar sits in a dent. Dent. You can inject it too, too, too superficially, in which case you kill the skin and get a little ulcer. So there are risks with doing steroid injections, although they're not that bad. And then if you move up to uh, intralegal excision, then the risks are greater because it can come back bigger than the original um, scar. So if you, if you like, for instance, one of the breasts, which is quite a big one, by the way, um, the one on the breast, one of the breast is, um, if that's from a little injury and has more formed a big scar, if then, I then cut it out and give a big scar, then that big scar could form an even, even bigger keloid. So it's intralegal excision is risque. So I wouldn't feel comfortable moving to intralegal excision without trying steroids. Oh, sorry about that. Did I walk, did I yawn live on TV then? Um, I, would, <laughs> I would do steroid injection next. And I know it, it just feels uncomfortable. And this is a problem with doing private medicine. If it was in the NHS, there'd be no question but when you're paying for it, I understand how you might say, I don't want to waste my money on steroids if it's not going to work. You know, you can't guarantee it's going to work. Well, no, I can't guarantee it's going to work. And you might waste your money on it, but you might not. It might work. From a medical point of view, the right thing to do now is steroid injections. If that doesn't work, then to do intralegal excision. And I know if it doesn't work, you're going to turn around and say, oh, you're a money grabber. You've done steroid injections just because you wanted the money. I'm not. I didn't just want the money. I just thought it was the right thing to do because it could have worked. And we want to be positive and hope it does work because if it does work, then happy days. We don't need an excision. I would like to do that. I would like to do steroid injections and then hopefully we won't need an excision. That's where I am on it. Kim and family. Um, says why do keloids happen we don't know kim and family there's no animal model model for it we don't really know there's a huge amount of research on it but we don't really know is the easy answer what's going on sorry